Welcome to my next offering in my um, occasional series of Juan's World, which I think is going to be weekly for next little while. Um, I think when I get to episode 300, I'm going to have a rethink. But for right now, I think once a week is okay. And here's the curiosity, is that this year, for the first time in maybe over 60 years, I missed Pancake Day. <laughs> Pancake Day is Shrove Tuesday. Now it was way back, weeks ago, uh, in February. And uh, for some reason or other, I just missed it. Um, I got sick uh, uh, a little later, but that was not my excuse. But just uh, didn't notice for some reason. That's very peculiar. So this past weekend, I made up for it by having what I could call Pancake Sunday, I guess. The Pancake Day, Shrove Tuesday, is normally the day before Ash Wednesday when Lent begins. We're now right in the, in the middle of Lent. We're in the, um, uh, well, just had the uh, second Sunday in Lent and moving on. So I made pancakes on uh, Sunday just so that I would at least have them because I've got to have my pancakes once a year. But it reminded me of something that annoys me to a degree, and uh, but I don't do much about it. It's that people in the United States have this habit of going on and on about how the English um, call certain things puddings and certain things pancakes that they don't call puddings or pancakes. And so I thought, okay, well, we'll actually look at all of that and we'll call this episode of Puddings and Pancakes. All right, so let's start with pudding. Now, the typical uh, complainer in the United States will say, why do the English call cake pudding? Well, mostly that's just sheer ignorance. They don't understand that the English call a lot of things puddings. Um, in the United States, there's a tendency uh, to call only one thing, pudding, that is a kind of a milk-based um, treat of certain sorts, a chocolate pudding or vanilla pudding, uh, which can be either um, baked or, or steamed or what have you, and then that, that's pudding. Well, let's look at the Oxford English Dictionary, and that's always a good place to start when you're talking about words, because the Oxford English Dictionary gives you the first written example of a word that they can find, and then it traces its history um, by decade or century or whatever down to the present. Look at pudding. Pudding is derived from the f old French word boudin, um, and boudin is still actually a good modern French word, and it means basically a kind of sausage. Um, and it's always meant that, um, or it's meant chopped up meat, um, either put into a casing like a, um, uh, an animal's intestines or, or into some kind of container and made into something sausage -y. All right, well, at first you might think, well, wait a minute, that that's, doesn't sound like uh, we still do that. And then you think, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 black pudding, <laughs> oh yes, of course. Black pudding is um, typically from Northern England and it's, um, it's blood sausage. It's a mixture of some kind of cereal, oats maybe, and pig's blood made into a sausage and then chopped up or sliced up for 
um, part of a good um, full English breakfast. All right, so there we go. Um, and then there's Yorkshire pudding. Uh, Yorkshire pudding is um, batter, um, exactly the same batter as is used in pancakes, except you either make a whole tray of it, um, you know, you can spread the batter out into um, a large pan and then put it under a beef that's roasting so that it cooks but it also has the richness of the um, of the beef fat and, and drippings in it. Um, <clears throat> and then there's Christmas pudding and again the people in the United States will often say well why do they call cake pudding? Well Christmas pudding is not a cake <laughs> pure and simple Christmas pudding is a steamed suet pudding very rich in fruit um, uh, bound together with flour and eggs and uh, and then, of course, um, on Christmas Day is steamed for hours and hours and, and then pour some brandy on it and set light to it and, and, uh, and then yum it down with custard or with, um, uh, I usually use whipped cream, um, whatever. Uh, now, more generally, pudding in England, the Eng English word pudding has become a generic word that means dessert. Um, so at um, school lunches, kids will, will say what's for pudding, meaning after we've had our main course, um, what is the dessert? So pudding could be anything. Uh, it could be the same as in the United States. You know, it could be a chocolate pudding. Um, could be a piece of cake, um, could be a tart, um, could be um, anything sweet. Um, it's just it's just a, a synonym for for dessert. So that's the long answer when it comes to pudding. A pancake is a little bit shorter. Um, in on either side of the Atlantic, pancake really means different things in the north of America and the south of America and in Britain. Um, in North America, pancakes are typically a breakfast food. They're typically made with self-raising flour or some other kind of leavening um, and they're fat and thick and uh, you just pile them up, serve them with butter maple syrup, maybe some bacon um, for breakfast. They do have such a thing in the United Kingdom. They're usually called drop scones or uh, scotch pancakes. Um, they do exist, but they're not very common. What the English normally call a pancake is what the French would call a crepe. And I've done um, a, 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 a cooking version uh, of this episode 58 I'll put a, a link down down below um, and I won't repeat it because the the batter for pancakes is a fairly universal batter that can be used for frying you know coating uh, fish and then and frying, although this one is not typically used in, in like fish and chip shops, but you can do it at home. Uh, it's used for Yorkshire pudding. Um, I use it to make uh, tortilla um, as we make them in Argentina. And it's also used in Argentina for panqueques, which are same as an English pancake, except that they use uh, dulce de leche as the filling. Um, so on Shrove Tuesday, we make the, the pancakes that are traditional for that day. And that was what I did in episode 58, that is you make the pancake. Um, and typically what we do at home is we make them one at a time. Uh, that's what my mother used to do. Um, 
I never knew when when it was Pancake Day, but some Tuesday, some somewhere around the end of February, beginning of March, our pudding for the day would be pancakes, and she would go up to the stove and she'd make them one at a time, and dole them out to each of us as she made them. And I used to do the same with my son when uh, when he was growing up. Um, I'd make a big batch of the batter, which is basically flour and water mixed together till it's fairly stiff and then add eggs to uh, lighten it up and then one at a time. You <laughs> used to eat 10, 11, sometimes 12 of them uh, at a sitting. I probably still would if I still made them. Uh, but nowadays I usually just have two. Um, and so you make the pancake and then you serve it very hot and the, the diner sprinkles on some sugar and fresh lemon juice and then roll it up and more sugar, more lemon juice and yum it down. But what I've done for many, many years is I've made the, the whole dinner a pancake dinner. And that means that I have pancakes for the main course as well as pancakes for dessert. So we have the lemon and sugar pancakes at the pudding stage, but then I fill the, the, the pancakes at the um, at the main course time with whatever happens to be in my mind at the time. So this year um, I've had this particular thing going on with leeks and if you saw my uh, St. David's Day uh, video you'll know that I was busy working with leeks on St. David's Day but I've still got tons of leeks. I always have them. Uh, don't always have onions but I always have leeks. and. So I've decided to make two fillings this year. The first one is a combination of leeks and oyster mushrooms. And it's very simple, just um, soften the leeks. Uh, when they've, before they're taken on color, but they're softer, then add some sliced or chopped up oyster mushrooms, stir all together, and then use that as you're filling. And here you can see I've made two uh, pancakes with the uh, leek and mushroom filling with a couple of dollops of um, a spicy chili sauce and some pickles, um, adding a little bit of color. And the second filling I made was leeks again and spinach. And for sp the spinach I very lightly poached it, then added chopped up uh, uh, leeks to it and and then blended them all together and then into a pancake and there's um, another main dish. And then my last hurrah, um, because I, I never waste food, I, I had some of the fillings left over after I'd made um, two of each of the pancakes. I still had some of both the, the mushroom leek and the spinach leek filling. And I also had some leek soup left over from um, St. David's Day. So I just combined them all together and made a sort of very rich um, vegetable soup, <laughs> which I had uh, just the other day. And now I can <laughs> finally like finish everything off uh, from Pancake Day and St. David's Day and move into something new, don't know what. But if you've enjoyed this video, then please tell your friends. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with a new topic. Have a good week.